Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. Let's... words introduced America to the Beatles. Tonight, CNN's original series, The 60s, looks back at how the Fab Four kicked off an era known as the British Invasion that forever changed American culture and music. Joining us now, Louise Harrison. Imagine this. She's the older brother of Beatle George Harrison, author of the upcoming book, it's so br brilliantly titled, Louise, My Kid Brother's Band, a.k.a. The Beatles. Imagine having a Beatle for a little brother. Such a delight to have you. Fans have been wanting you to publish this book for so long. <laughs> you say you wrote the book because you wanted to tell the truth about the Beatles. What yeah, do you which mean? Was much less interesting than all of the weird stories that have been out about them <laughs> forever, you know. What are the so, myths? What are the myths? Well, the first one was uh, George being the quiet Beatle. So that, that, I mean, that was a well-known nickname. Well, why was, why was he known as the quiet Beatle? Because... If you look at those pictures that I gave you, the day before the Ed Sullivan show, pictures of George and I, mm -hmm. and you can see on his face how ill he was. He had a strep throat. His temperature was 104 degrees. When the doctor from the Plaza Hotel took a look at him and said, we need to put this young man in hospital. He's mm -hmm. very, very ill. And the uh, manager, Brian Epstein, just about had a heart attack. They almost <laughs> needed to take him to hospital. <laughs> anyway, they, I, I was there with them and uh, they said, okay, move her into the bedroom, give her the medications to take, you know, take care of him, and we'll have him on his feet by Sunday night. He was quiet because he wasn't feeling well. He was so exactly. sick. Exactly. And he had that fascinating. reputation all over yeah, And the doctor said to him, you know, try to save your voice. Don't say anything, you know. So, <laughs> so you, you, know saved, you saved the Beatles. I mean, basically, well, the appearance on the Ed Sullivan show. I wouldn't no, no, put let's it. Let's give you credit we'll for credit. Put it that way. You nursed him back to health. They broke through, really, just exploded onto right. the American scene with that show and yeah. changed the course of the world forever. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good But it sister. was a long, long haul, though, getting that to happen, because back in 63, I had moved into this country in March, and my mom started sending me all of the uh, singles that were coming out. And that's where the title of my book comes from. I was going around all the radio stations and saying, this is my kid brother's band, and they're number one in England, and you know, maybe you should be playing them here. What'd they say to you? Well, for the most part, they looked at me like, what? Who let you out of the kitchen, young lady? <laughs> oh, it was ooh. back in those days. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Did you have a time? It seems almost crazy to think of this, but was there a time where you wondered maybe it won't happen for them? Maybe they won't get that big break they need? We weren't even thinking in terms of a big break. We were just thinking in terms of getting them their records played, you know. <laughs> so, and look at that now. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever no. imagine it would be what it, what it is and what it was? Not really. You know, because even years later, um, I was with George and we were watching the um, films of them coming down the steps oh, from the plane. Yeah. Such iconic And everyone images. remembers. Yeah. And he said to me, you know, if we'd have had any idea how important that trip was going to be if he said we probably would have been scared stiff he said but as it was we were just jolly little cheeky boys coming along having fun just along that line I mean, at the ed at the ed sullivan show did you you were when you were there and you yep. heard the screams and you heard everything did you gather that that was the moment that was a moment it still no, was no, yeah you know it, it took a long time for it all to sink in wow. and you know one of the cute things about it too was ed sullivan you know was always known to be kind of um stiff he was having a blast with the beatles because they included him as though he was one of the gang That's great. so let's talk about you know, yeah. about the scene yeah. was it always fun you went on tour with them for years really well, not actually 64? on tour what happened was uh, i was accidentally um, made into a beetle reporter because <laughs> i'm sure I, completely <laughs> objective yeah it's absolutely well for the only completely objective one but because I corrected something that had happened at the, uh, uh, the British ambassador's house the day before, the, well, evening before we did the um, Coliseum show. And I corrected that miss story. And then the next thing was the uh, producer of that radio station said, will you come on and do Beatle reports for us each day? Because there's so much crazy stuff going about them. You're, and you're you'd the be only in a position to know the awe. truth. You yeah. really kept a low profile for a very, very long time. Why is that? Why is, yeah, why would you? Well, my brother, uh, well, especially after John was killed, my brother said mm. to me, you know, um, stay, stay invisible. Mm. He said, because there's so many loonies out there that would figure that because you're connected to me, at least they get the name in the paper for five minutes, you know. 
So, so was this wow. a big decision then to, to talk about it and to, to start writing this book? Well, actually, it was at the beginning of the um, 90s that I decided to, and I talked to George about this, um, I started, I had, I had two grandchildren at that point. Congratulations. And, and stopped at that. Yeah. But um, I was very, very concerned about the future of the health of the planet. And so I started an environmental organization which was called um, Drop In. You know, the idea was that dropping out wasn't really a smart thing to do. So at that point, I talked to George and I said, look, okay, I'm now older than my mom and dad were when they died. I'm not scared. And I think that maybe my connection to the Beatles could help to get some, uh, you know, some momentum Attention. going. Yeah, sure. Because I was with, at a Paul McCartney concert one time. I was talking to a bunch of the fans and they said, he was doing stuff about the um, Peter and Friends of the World, Friends of the Earth. And they were saying, why don't we have a Beatle environmental organization? And they asked me to start one, so that's what I did. You Louise, we could sit and listen to your stories all day, and I'm so glad you're writing this book. It is going to be a read that we won't be able to put down. Thank you for joining us to tell us some stories about your, bro your kid you. brother's okay. band. Thanks for sharing it okay. with us. And we should also point out CNN's original series, The Sixties, airing tonight Ten. at 9 Eastern and Pacific. Tune in, set the DVR, and just enjoy. The Beatles craze. An honor to meet you. Real delight. Next Thank up you. for us on New Day. Changing the criminal justice system. Senator Rand Paul joins us live to talk about rehabilitating nonviolent offenders and bipartisanship. Look, there's a Democrat 